Hey guys, so um, last night Pete CD Vinyl World made a really cool video response to a thread that's been going around the vinyl community lately having to do with showing 10 records that share links to each other. And I think that's just the coolest idea ever. And I couldn't wait to jump into my collection and, and dig. Uh, at first, I knew of a few that I could choose, but to fill out the 10 really took some work and some research. Uh, I learned a lot and it was a blast. I can't wait to share these with you. Uh, before I get started, I just want to thank uh, Stefino McLaughlin for joining the channel. Thanks a lot for having you along. It's going to be fun. And uh, I'll leave a link to your channel as well as uh, Pete's in the description. So check them out and let's all hang out. So, first record I'm going to show to you, show to you guys uh, is a record by my brother's favorite band of all time. And if he were in my house today, he'd tell you that that band is Green Day. Uh, this is their fourth record. This is Insomniac. Uh, it came out in 95. It follows the incredible commercial smash hit of Dookie, which was released just the year before. Uh, and at the time, I'm sure that there was plenty of pressure put on the band from themselves and the label to outsell Dookie. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen. But um, artistically and musically, man, this thing just blows it out of the water. Uh, this is a masterpiece and by far my favorite record by the band. Um, it's so angry and so raw and full of uh, just, just, uh, it's real and you, you can feel it. Uh, and in fact, like half of these songs or more than half haven't been played live in like 20 years. And I'm sure it's because they don't want to get back into that negative headspace that they were in uh, while producing the record. The reason I'm showing it to you, however, is the uh, artist of the, the cover, the cover art and the back art, back cover art. Uh, this cool kind of mosaic collage uh, is done by a guy named Winston Smith. Uh, Winston Smith had a lot of had a close connection with a particular punk rock band in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, designing a lot of their stuff, including their iconic logo. Uh, in fact, I should have used that logo in my video the other night. Uh, that band, of course, being. Uh, the Dead Kennedys. Uh, this is their second album, uh, uh, Plastic Surgery Disasters. Fantastic stuff. It came out in 82. Uh, I've been listening to this record since I was 12 or 13 years old. Uh, I grew up with this. We've got uh, Forest Fire, Winnebago Warrior, I Am the Owl. It's just hit after hit for me. Uh, it just, it's, it's, it's so, so good. Um, but regardless, uh, this, this cover is not designed by Winston, but he did the inside art. Uh, what was really cool about the Dead Kennedys is that they used to put out these really nice big booklets uh, that had these really cool mosaic collage arts um, uh, pages full of Winston's art to kind of go along with the tone of the album, to go along with the lyrics and kind of how, wh how what the band was feeling at the time. Uh, what's really cool, what I'm looking for now, is uh, part of this right here. You got this, uh, this dentist here and this poor bastard in the chair. They're actually featured on, uh, on the Insomniac cover up here. So we've got not only a connection uh, from the artist, but we've got a connection of art. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. So um, we've got uh, Winston Smith as the as the first connection. The next connection we have is Jella Biafra. Uh, Jella Biafra is of course uh, the lead vocalist and lyricist of the Dead Kennedys. Brilliant, brilliant musician. Uh, super versatile, has played with plenty of different different groups and, and done spoken word. And he's just really accomplished and I respect the hell out of him. Um, so he sang with the Dead Kennedys in his in his travels, and after the Dead Kennedys broke up, he hooked up with uh, another one of my favorite artists named uh, Ice T. Ice T, of course, being uh, your favorite cop on uh, Law and Order or whatever the hell he's on, but uh, my favorite uh, as a rapper and as a, as a heavy metal guy. So um, this is one of his rap albums. This is Freedom of Speech. Just watch what you say. Brilliant stuff. Came out in '89. Um, and uh, how he features Biafra is on the first track on uh, Shut Up Be Happy. Uh, what it is, it's a really cool um, kind of loop of the opening riff to Black Sabbath by Black Sabbath mixed with a police siren and Jello yelling at people to kind of get inside their house and that the curfew is almost up and it's almost like an emergency service alert. A uh, really, really cool and a really cool eerie way to open the album. Uh, what I dig about Ice is that he is true to himself and he's always acknowledged that he's a rap guy, but he's also a metal guy and a punk guy. So, um, you know, while this record was coming out, he was also working on uh, a, 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 a record from the next band I'm gonna show, uh, but he had Jello Biafra, you know, world famous punk rocker on this one. So I always thought that was cool uh, that he could kind of chameleon himself uh, however he felt, uh, whenever he felt it, and I, I love it. So, uh, yeah, so Ice-T is our next connection. Ice-T, uh, as I was saying, uh, the next band, he's in this band, Body Count. This is his metal band that he formed with his buddy Ernie C uh, when they were in middle school or high school together. 
Ernie C was a metal guy, Ice T was a rap guy, uh, but uh, Ice T wanted Ernie to be able to play, uh, or to, he wanted to bring him on the road, so they formed the band together, uh, and the rest is history. So compromise, guys, come on, what better is that? Um, this is Born Dead, this is their second LP, super, super great stuff, came out in 94. Uh, it's not as, not as maybe as heavy or as groundbreaking as their debut, but nonetheless, it's just as good. Um, what, we, what we've got, the well, next section that we've got that we're going to talk about is uh, a guy named Jerry Finn. If I say Jerry Finn, uh, if it doesn't sound familiar to you, I'll jog your memory. One of the biggest record producers in the 90s and early 2000s. Fortunately, he passed away in 2008, uh, but, but before, uh, before that, uh, he left a legacy of some of the biggest pop and punk records ever produced. Uh, but he cut his teeth on this record. This is one of his first projects where he did some engineering uh, before moving on to produce uh, one of the biggest selling pop punk records of all time, namely Take Off Your Pants and Jacket uh, by Blink-182. Now, I might lose some street cred points by showing this record, but uh, I attribute these guys to, you know, to opening me up to, to punk rock and to the Ramones and to really uh, making me fall in love with music for the very first time. So I, I'll always have room on my shelf for them. And I dig them, I won't lie, you know, with my video, I don't give a shit what you think. <laughs> uh, this is a really nice uh, reissue of the record. It's got this nice tri-fold uh, packaging and it's got a nice um, uh, hand number to the 2500 certificate and signed by Mark Hoffis, the bass player and the vocalist. Really, really pretty package. But the best part of the record is that uh, when this came out on CD originally, the labels of the CD either had uh, a takeoff, uh, they had pants, or they had a jacket. So when you bought the CD, you didn't know which version you were going to get. And depending on the version, you'd get two unique bonus tracks. So what they did with this is that they packaged those bonus tracks on three different seven inches. How cool is that? Man, when I saw this, I flipped. I overpaid for it, I'll admit, but it's just such a big part of my childhood and I needed to have it. I needed to have the whole package together uh, and, and what a trip, man. So we got uh, Take Off, Your Pants, and Jacket. Our next connection. So we've got, uh, let's just revisit. We had Winston Smith, then we had Jello Biafra, then we had Ice-T, then we had uh, Jerry Finn, who uh, engineered Body Count and produced Blink, and then um, we've got a guy named Chris Lord Algae. I hope that's how you say his name. I see it written all the time, but I've never actually heard it verbalized. Um, regardless, he mixed this Blink record, but he also mixed this next record, which is one of my top albums ever. Um, it really opened me up to uh, new kinds of music, uh, namely industrial. Uh, before Ministry, this was kind of the primer to Ministry. Uh, and I'm, of course, I'm talking about Marilyn Manson. Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful masterpiece. This is uh, Mechanical Animals. Um, what's cool about the, the vinyl version is that when this came out on CD, there was 14 tracks, but on vinyl, it's split into two distinct records. Uh, and the track sequence has been changed so that there's seven and seven, um, and they tell two different stories. So we've got half, which is uh, Marilyn Manson, and the other half, which is Omega and the Mechanical Animals. Marilyn Manson's kind of alter ego at the time of this record. What's really, really cool, and I can't show you because of the, the video quality, but one of the records is blue and the other is, is white. Uh, the blue one is translucent, and on the lyric sheet, you've got these hidden messages in yellow that you can't see the naked eye, but when you put the blue over, uh, they, become, they become green. Uh, it's so cool, uh, and it's just, it, it shows what a wicked artist Manson was and how uh, he really cared for his craft. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so uh, we were talking about um, uh, Chris Lord Algae. So he mixed Blink and he mixed this. Uh, the next connection that we have is, uh, this was the first record to feature um, John Five, the legendary guitarist that played with Manson for uh, almost a decade. I don't think he played on the album. He's only credited as live guitarist um, because Zim Zum recorded most of the tracks. But regardless, he's credited uh, as a guitarist, so I'll, I'll, I'll consider him um, as part of the record. That said, uh, after he ditched Manson, after kind of years of infighting, uh, he jumped over to uh, Rob Zombie's ship, which is uh, who I'll show next. And this, uh, this is Educated Horses. This is Rob Zombie's third solo record, Killer Killer Stuff. Uh, it came out in 2006, but was released on vinyl for the first time in 2018. Uh, and yes, I ordered it as soon as it became available. Um, I love this record. I grew up with it. Um, first to feature John Five, and uh, the next record that followed this actually was the first to feature uh, Gingerfish, who also played with Manson for a long time. So. Uh, either Mike Manson's a hard guy to get along with or Rob Zombie's a fun guy to work with, I don't know. Either way, uh, next connection that we have is uh, Josh Freese. Josh Freese, of course, is a world-famous uh, drummer, has been playing with the Vandals for 30 years. 
uh, did some session work with everybody from pop artists to rap artists to punk to metal everything but he's been in bands he's been playing with Devo for the past 25 years uh, as the Vandals like I just mentioned uh, but he did some notable work too with one of my favorite bands that I've talked about multiple times uh, which is the Dwarves this is uh, The Dwarves Must Die. This is their 2004 release, killer stuff. This is actually a nice reissue that came out in 2013 that featured a couple bonus tracks that weren't on the original pressing. So I got rid of my original copy and replaced it with this one. Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a battle in my head if I, if I should have kept the original or not, but I'm glad to have the new songs. Anyway, uh, Josh Fries did some great, great drumming on this record. Uh, some session work um, kind of in between the Dwarves with their regular drummer and between finding a new guy, Josh Fries did some fill-in stuff. So, um, yeah, Josh Fries is the next connection. Uh, following this, uh, on this record as well, uh, if you've heard the song Salt Lake City, you'll know that Dexter Holland, most famous uh, for being lead vocalist and guitarist of The Offspring, uh, makes an appearance on here. So our next connection is going to be with The Offspring. It's cool, earlier I was talking about uh, Dookie that came out in 94. This is Smash, uh, uh, Offspring's Mega Smash that helped put punk rock uh, on the map in 94 along with Dookie. So it's kind of cool that I'm mentioning both. Um, so Dexter, obviously this is his band. Uh, he's the boss of this ship. Uh, killer Stuff, this is a classic. Everyone's heard it millions of times. If you haven't, yeah, you have. Uh, it's great, great stuff. Uh, what this is, but this is, what I'm gonna talk about now is my last connection, uh, which is just mind blowing to me. This is such a groundbreaking punk rock record. Uh, that did so much good for the genre and, and, and exposed so many kids to the style. Um, and it was produced by a guy named Tom Wilson. And Tom Wilson actually also engineered one of the most groundbreaking punk rock records ever made 15 years earlier, which is the debut by The Adolescents. This is their first record, self-titled, one of the greatest records ever made of any style, any day of the week. Uh, rest in peace to Steve Soto, who passed away a couple years ago. Man, what a fucking, what a fucking monster. You'll be missed, man. Uh, um, this is, I can't describe how much I love this album. Um, uh, but I don't want to get too sappy about it, so I'll just say that Tom Wilson did some engineering on here when he was a young guy. Uh, so yeah, that's, those are my connections. Uh, and in keeping with uh, my tradition, I'll show you what I was playing while I was talking to you. This is a wonderful, wonderful album by The Tragedy Hip. Uh, we are the same. It's uh, not their, I think it's their third or fourth last record that they put out. Um, but uh, beautiful Canadian music. Gord Downey was such a wonderful guy. Uh, super philanthropist and humanitarian, and he'll be missed forever. So, um, guys, that's it for tonight. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Hope you had some fun. Please make a response video. I'd love to see what connections you can come up with. Uh, thanks for supporting, and thanks just for, for your time. I appreciate it.